Welcome all. Today I am going to start a new series for deploying a .NET microservice to Kubernetes and this is the part 1 of a series of tutorials based on Microsoft article. Now let's see the Microsoft microservice applications are composed of small independently versioned and scalable customer focused service. So before we go further this is the part of that tutorial based on the following Microsoft documentation docs.microsoft.com slash learn modules .NET deploy microservices Kubernetes. If you'd like you could also visit the article and revise the stuff. Okay, so Microsoft service applications deployed in containers make it possible to scale out apps and respond to increased demand by deploying more container instances and to scale back if demand is decreasing. In complex situations of many microservices, the process of deploying, updating and monitoring and removing containers introduces challenge. This module explains some of the challenges and shows how Kubernetes can help. Okay, so we will start with an introduction. Now think of a scenario where you have started a new job as a software developer at the world's most popular pizza joint, say Contoso Pizza. It could be Pizza Hut, Pizza Inn, Pizza King or whatever pizza, Domino's. So this is a imaginary pizza store as per Microsoft jargon. Okay, world. Now business is booming and the Contoso Pizza's website that include indicates whether the pizzas are in stock or not has recently been refactored into microservices hosted in Docker containers. Yes. True, microservices can also be hosted in Docker containers because they are, after all, a web API. You know, so in a microservice-based development approach, each microservice owns its model and data, so that it will be autonomous from a development and deployment point of view from other microservices. In other words, it is a decoupled scenario where one microservice is decoupled from a the rest of the microservices so that they are independently or individually deployable so that it doesn't result in a runtime interruption when one of the microservices is updated and redeployed so entire system still starts working other than the uh, microservice that is getting deployed so hosting microservices inside of a container is a common way to achieve that now these kinds of systems are complex to scale out and manage. You need to consider the process of organizing, adding, removing and updating many containers. This process is referred to as container management or container orchestration. For example, let's say you find during specific times of the day, you need to scale up the number of container instances that handle caching. So pizza sales, you know, there are there could be some containers okay docker containers that just handle caching so caching of those data that are repeatedly used and they don't change often or you may have an update to the container instance that checks pizza inventory now to help with the container management task you can use a container orchestrator so Kubernetes is one such orchestrator. It is an extensible open source platform for managing and orchestrating containers, containerized workloads. And next in the next module or in the next part, we will know in we will delve in deep what are the orchestrators. Okay. So we'll finish it at this stage. <coughs> 